Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome each and every one of you to the Central South Division Evaluation Human Speech Contest for the 2012-2013 year. Got a question for you. Is anyone excited? We got to show more enthusiasm because we got some competition in here today. So, are you excited? Well, we have a trick for you. What we have is the best of the best of Central South, and they are going to give you something to look forward to, something to laugh about, some great evaluations. We're going to have a good time. But before we start, we have to go over a few housekeeping items. If you have been in the contest, you know the rules. Do anybody know what this is? Become be very familiar with this, because if you have one of these, I need you to make it quiet. Shut it down. There's nothing important that you need to talk about to in the next two hours, unless when we, you take your break. But we need you to shut this down simply because we're going to have some evaluators here. We're going to have some humorous speakers here. And we don't want anything to distract them. We don't want any obscene noises or anything to throw them off course. We want to be fair to all of our contestants. So if you could take a moment to just silence your phones, please. While you're silencing your phones, if in the event that you have to go to the bathroom, if you can walk out of this back door over here to your left, walk straight out on your right hand side, you're going to see the women's room first, then the man's room is right behind the women's room. Please don't get them confused. We don't want any type of trouble in here this evening. So, with all that being said, we have everything together. We're going to get this contest going. So, what I need for each and every one of you to do is to help me do something. I want you to help me bring up our Toastmaster of the day. And our Toastmaster of the day is our division governor for Central South. So, ladies and gentlemen, can you please put your hands together and help me welcome our division governor, Charlene Reinhardt. Fabian 
B16 area governor, LaShonda Milton. <laughs> Moving on to our Central North governors, C21 area governor, Rachel Tab. <laughs>
point of order, can we have the title of the speech? Yes. The title of the speech, A Life Plan. Thank you. One more time. A Life Plan. Thank you. It's on wheels. If you tilt it towards her, the other way. The wheels are on the other side and closest to her. There you go. Master, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. Have you ever sat down and thought about your life and where it was heading? Most people only think about getting through today's activity, the here and now. What I would like to tell you, tell you about is how I developed a life plan. I'm talking about the big picture, the important things in life, and some of the traditional things. For me, it was getting a college degree, getting that job, finding someone special, getting married, having children. You know the important things. You name it, what's important to you. Having a life plan gives you direction on how to get out of life what you really want, even though there's no guarantees. Some people call it their plan A or plan B or their bucket list. I learned that I needed a life plan. I wasn't taught at an early age to develop a life plan. I I did what I observed from my parents and other successful people around me. As a result of not having a life plan, I went through the stage I call the wannabes mm -hmm. in high school. I wanted to be Claudette Jones. She was pretty, popular, and wore nice clothes. So I tried to be Claudette, Claudette Jones for a while. Not long after trying, I realized that I couldn't be her. I had to learn to be who I was and what was important to me. I learned that I had to have an ongoing life plan and to impl implement, in implement it. As a high school freshman, I was successful planning all my courses I wanted to take my first four, the f first four years in high school, and I graduated. I wanted to go to college, but unfortunately, I didn't have the financial <coughs> support, I, so I opt for junior college. I learned that one plan ends and the second plan should start, but it didn't happen that way for me. I drifted through life. Life took over, things happened, and I soon got married. It was something I wanted to do, but not at that particular time. Several years went by, and we had a child, and that was planned. Several more years went by, and one day it hit me. What's next? Now it was scary, because the longer you live, you begin to realize that you have less life left and stuff and more stuff to consider. Deciding what to do next became complicated. I felt too emotional to make an objective decision, so I got help. The, voc the vocational counselor immediately realized after only talking with me a few minutes that I didn't have a life plan for myself. She helped me to realize that children grow up. And while you may be madly in love today, that may not be the case tomorrow. 
My life consisted in helping everyone else with their dreams. I simply was doing all the things I was taught to do as a woman, to marry and to raise your children. The counselor helped me define what life experiences I really wanted, I really wanted for me. Over the course of my life, I started and stopped college at least five times. I tried to finish, but something or someone prevented me from making it happen. After a conversation with my counselor, I decided for the for the rest of my life, I only wanted to I I only started what I intended to finish. I went back to school on an academic probation at Roosevelt University, but I graduated with honors. And when Blue Cross Blue Shield Association offered the MBA program from Lake Forest Graduate School of Management, I decided to go, and I got straight A's. What I learned, if you do not have a plan, get a plan. Once you decide on a plan, implement it. By developing a life plan and following it, I was more successful and lived a more fulfilled life. My question to you, do you have a life plan? The good news is, it's never too late to develop your life plan. Toastmaster, I only 
been in the organization two months and giving your first speech, what else do you do outside of the organization? Well, I have a new hobby um, because I figured when you get older, you need a hobby. So I decided to <laughs> make jewelry. So that's what I've been working on. It's an expensive hobby, but I'm, I'm getting good at it. Nice. Do you have your own business? No, I don't make it that well. <laughs> coming out. I appreciate your coming here listening to my speech um, and I hope you kind of enjoy, enjoyed it and found it very interesting and I meant what I said. If you don't have a life plan, get a life plan. And you <laughs> Thank you. to hear from our evaluation contestants. There will be one minute of silence before the first contestants and between each contestant. Timekeepers, when I advise you to do so, please signal me with a green light when one minute is up. 
After all contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time they need to complete their ballots. We will now begin the speech evaluation contest. Cynthia Leggett, Leggett, evaluation contestant number one. Evaluation contestant number one, Cynthia Leggett. Thank you, Madam Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests, and to our target speaker, Faye. Faye, I like your title, A Life. Plan. What came to my mind immediately was Stephen Covey begin with the end in mind. And that's the approach you took, and I like that. I'm asking myself now, in my mature years, what is going to be the rest of the plan of my life? So I like the fact that you threw a question at us right away. And I'm sure everybody in here, at one time or another, has asked that question, if not that way, what is my purpose? What am I going to be doing in the future? So I like that focus that you brought us into. I like how you mentioned your achievements, because you were sharing as you were going through your life plan, marriage, children. You talked about college. I was a little envious, though, when you said you had straight A's. <laughs> <laughs> I only had one A in college. I got a little envious there, but she had a plan yet. You asked a series of important questions throughout your speech. What is important? What's next? And then you talked about how you wanted to be like Claudia. Now, I can think of a number of people I wanted to be like growing up, and I'm sure some of us can too, because you admire hopefully those qualities. What I would have loved to hear you say more about was how is it you wanted to be like Claudia? A little more. That could have been demonstrated a little more. Here's some things that will make this speech even stronger. Pretty much you will reading your notes, and that's okay. But you know what? I felt you knew this subject matter enough. What you probably would want to do another time is put together some note cards. Hit key ideas or key words that will trigger you to start the process of your story. What that'll do for you, that'll prevent you from reading, looking, stopping, losing your place. Because you'll have the key idea and you'll have the flow in mind. Personal stories, I would have loved to hear a little more personal stories, and better yet, what really triggered you to really start thinking about planning your life, that life plan? What things went through your mind? What things did you question? What things did you, I need to start doing that. I would have loved to hear more of that. Now, I always encourage people when I hear a beautiful introduction, some strong body, the ending, a quote is a good way to end the speech. A personal story is a fantastic way to end the speech to me personally because it gives the speaker credibility. But I must commend you. You made me rethink again the purpose of looking at my bucket list, which is sort of long, but asking that question, what is my life's plan? Thank you. one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots.
Anthony Smith, evaluation contestant number two. Evaluation contestant number two, Anthony Smith. Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters, people who can get tickets to the Prince concert. I'll <laughs> <laughs> start with our event. We have the privilege of having this event in this magnificent building, the Sears Tower. I know it's the Willis Tower, but I'm old school, so it's the Sears Tower. <laughs> this building, like all buildings, have a structure, they have a foundation, they have a skeletal makeup, and they have materials that wrap the building, the windows, etc., etc. That structure in the building is also a similar structure that we have in the speech. The speech <coughs> introduction is the foundation, the body is the skeletal structure, and the conclusion <coughs> wraps up everything that you talked about. Faye, you had all that in your speech. And I thank you for giving your speech. Your introduction was your foundation. What you did, you asked us a question, which is always a good start. You asked us about what we thought about life, or have we thought about life. You talked about things that you wanted to do in your life, and you talked about someone asking you or encouraging you to make a life plan. You talked about college, you talked about marriage, you talked about kids. That was the foundation that you set. Then you transitioned to the skeletal part. You expounded on going to college, junior college, and the MBA program, getting married, and having kids. So that was the skeletal part of it. Then you came back and you wrapped it up by asking us a question again, encouraging us basically to have a life plan as well. Those were very good things that you did. Magnificent things, just like this magnificent building. As this is also a magnificent building, this is also an iconic building. So to take your speech from being a magnificent speech to an iconic speech, there's a few things that you need to work on. Relax. Relax. You can't always prepare for what you're going to, the setting that you're going to be in, but you can always prepare your speech. So prepare it so you can just give it without relying on notes. Outside of that, it was an excellent speech. Thank you for your courage for getting in front of all these people to, to do it. And I look forward to hearing you speak again. while the judges mark their ballots. Evaluation contestant number three. Evaluation contestant number three, Erica Smith. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, guests, judges, and especially you, Faye. 
say, you ask any great speaker what things they consider when selecting a topic. One, are they knowledgeable about the subject? And two, does the topic have a universal appeal? Your topic on developing a life plan does have a universal appeal. We all strive to succeed in life, and we have a plan as far as how to go about achieving those dreams. You demonstrated your knowledge by telling us about your life plan, how you grew up, got married, had a child, and pursued an education, although it took you five times, but you did pursue and achieve that degree. One of your strengths was your use of rhetorical questions. You asked us about our life plan. You posed that question at the beginning of your presentation and towards the end. What's great about a rhetorical question is that it gets the audience thinking about their life plan. And then you remind us again, what is your life plan? Another strength of yours is your vocal tone. It's conversational, it's peaceful, it's easy to listen to. One area of improvement would be to work on memorizing most, if not all, of your presentation. One thing that can help you with that is to practice your presentation. Practice equals memorization, and you'll become more familiar with your speech. It will also allow you to engage more with the audience because you're telling us about your life. Faye, your speech tonight is more than just about delivering at a contest. I encourage you to see this as a learning opportunity. Mr. Madam Toastmaster. while the judges complete their ballots. Evaluation contestant number four, Matthew Fox. Matthew Fox, evaluation contestant number four. Madam Contest Master, fellow Toastmasters, and those of us who can't wait to get another life lesson from Faye. Now Faye, you brought us in right away. You asked a question, and you showed great awareness of the audience. Because really, it's not all about the speaker when you're up here. It's all about the audience and what's in it for us. You brought us through many trials and tribulations of your life, dealing from childhood, through high school, on to your recent accolades, congratulations on those with Blue Cross Blue Shield and Lake Forest College of Management. Those are wonderful. And you had a presence up here. It was somewhere between speech one and six, maybe an icebreaker, maybe another, but it, it really helped us to get to know you better. Although your passion and enthusiasm was strong, it's only going to get you about 75% of the way. I want to help get you that extra 25% so that way when you continue on your life plan, Toastmasters plays an important role in that. Because that's what we're here, is for Toastmasters. Now, 
you're probably going to hear something about using the podium, that this is a bit of a crutch. Although you have a great view of the audience, it's easy to get stuck here. Now, as you can see, if I'm moving over here, I connect with this side of the room. And then I can connect on this side and transition over. And it's a much more powerful message. A few ways to practice that. Put some masking tape down on different areas and try to move yourself over to each of those areas as you're practicing. Now, a life plan. It's hard not to get drawn into the speech. And that energy and enthusiasm, I think working on a few outside resources, like TED Talks, if you've heard of those, there's a section on there called Master Storytellers. It's amazing. It goes into detail about these people that have brilliant examples and lives, and I believe things that each of us can take away, especially as someone who I see as a very strong future storyteller. Now, continuing with that, there's another important area, an important research perspective. As a Toastmaster, we're always striving. We're always pushing. How can I get to the next level? How can I get that next achievement? There's a few other people. Earl Nightingale, Brian Tracy, Les Brown, who's a Chicago native. I believe all of these are wonderful influences that would be great as you continue to help us understand that lesson that a failure to plan is planning to fail. Now, I'm not the one that came up with that. I don't want to take credit for it. <laughs> I, I, I failed a few times in life, but it was many important reminders today of that presence and that audience involvement. In fact, I challenge you to experiment a little bit. Have people raise their hand next time to get them involved. Madam Congressman. May we have one minute of silence while the judges complete their ballots. Summa Dahl, evaluation contestant number five, evaluation contestant number five, Summa Dahl. Whenever I listen to a fellow Toastmaster speak, I always get a nugget that sparks my interest, ignites me to action. And in my evaluations, I hope to also deliver a nugget that sparks the speaker to become a stronger communicator. Fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests, and most especially Miss Faye Moody, wow, she came out of, this out of the gate strong, poised with a mission to inspire, to persuade. What is your life plan? Do you have one? I was already at the edge of my seat. Word choice, my favorite, vivid, clear. She writes for the ear. Particularly, I enjoyed the definition of life plan. What is a life plan? It's the big picture. It's your direction. Plan A, plan B, bucket list. These are phrases and words we can all relate to, and I instantly knew where she was taking us on her story. I also knew where we were going because her speech was clearly organized, linear, chronological, easy to follow. And I moved right there with her as she moved out of high school and then began to drift. We all know the drift. I particularly enjoy <laughs> how Faye pulled us 
pulled us close to her, into her story, by sharing personal anecdotes. We all have a Claudette in our life. We all have a Claudette in our life. Some opportunities for Faye's speech to become even stronger and inspire greater action in each of us. She ex exhibits so much confidence in her life, conquering the undergraduate degree, moving on to conquer a master's degree. And yet I found her holding back a little bit on the stage. Mm -hmm. Some of that confidence that carries her from plan A to plan B, no longer drifting, should be right here on the stage with us because this is a woman with confidence, but we need to hear it and to see it with strong, articulate gestures. I thought you had an opportunity, Miss Faye, to punch up a couple of those lines. And then it hit me. And then it hit me. Pause. Hang. Leave us there for a moment. What hit her? Was it a bus? Or was it insight? <laughs> goes a long way. Know what I mean? <laughs> Overall, such a clearly organized speech with a powerful message, easy to follow, and the call to action at the end, it is never too late. Never too late. Left me feeling good. And don't we love a speech that leaves you feeling good, inspired to take action? I particularly enjoyed the way she handled her few stutters. There weren't many, but she just kept moving. And that is a sign of a strong, confident speaker. You believed in yourself and accomplished so much, Miss Faye, and I would like to see more of that on the stage. Continue to inspire. You have a story we need to hear, and rock on. <laughs> May we have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots. Siobhan James, evaluation contestant number six. Evaluation contestant number six, Siobhan James. Faye. Hello, Toastmasters. Thank you very much, Faye, for sharing it's such a wonderful story with us. It's always interesting when people like yourself share these life experiences. I hope you don't mind, I'm going to talk to the rest of the room as well as, as to you. We learn from those stories when they're shared and they're very, very personal. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting to hear an experience that you had that took you from childhood and your role models, remembering Claudette. I think we've all been in that situation with, oh, I'd just so like to be this person. <laughs> that we don't always make it. We learn th new things and we move on. In this case, you shared very openly, and which made very vulnerable, that you really didn't have a life plan. You drifted, and I think I can testify to having done that. Went to the only college that would accept me. <laughs> took the only job that I could get offered. Took that. <laughs> so, you know what it's like to be in your shoes. <laughs> Unfortunately, like, unlike perhaps most of us, you did something about it, which was really excellent to hear. You took a life plan and you did something which I thought was rather interesting, was you shared the emotional aspect of it. Because any change in life, 
needs us to recognize that there's an emotional component to it. So you brought out something in your story that resonates with all of us, and you got help, which was also a sign of maturity that many people don't have when it comes to doing things in their life. One of the things I was a, a little concerned about was that, and I know this is probably one of your early speeches, is you're using the notes, and you'll grow out of that, don't worry, as you practice. And you were reading the notes. One of the things to remember to do is to say what's in your head. Now, I know I've got my notes right here, and I wrote them out in full sentences because that's what I wanted to say. But what's in your head is usually what comes from the heart. So share those things with the audience as you're thinking them, because they'll be truer to you and to the story that you're trying to tell. Even with all of that, you still had a wonderful structure. You took us through your life journey, all the events. You walked us through and you asked us yourself the question, what's next? And you took us all the way through to the end and you asked the audience a question, which is a really great way of rounding out a speech with Toastmasters, to ask the audience a question, to get them to think about, do you have a life plan? It was well done. I have a life plan. I hope the rest of you took something wonderful away from a face speech, and you think about or have now ideas for your own life plan. while the judges complete their ballots. Maria Modarelli, evaluation contestant number seven, evaluation contestant number seven, Maria Modarelli. <laughs> inspiring speech. One of the biggest strengths was in the message, because it was a message that was able to be related to by everyone in the audience. An incredible topic. What is your life plan? Have you thought about it? Something that we can all relate to and really benefit from taking time to think about. There's some things that you did really great in your speech, and then a couple of suggestions on ways you could connect with the audience even further. What was really great was telling that personal story. By telling a personal story, it was something that we were able to relate to on and then get to know you as a person as well. We talked about some challenges, things that you had to overcome. And boy, have we all had our fair share of challenges in life, right? You also started with a powerful question at the beginning and a powerful question at the end. You focus that had us taking a moment to reflect. Very well done. Another thing that was great was your delivery style was very smooth. A couple hesitations here or there, and you kept on going, delivered an excellent speech. So you were able to connect with the audience by giving us some you questions and by having a relatable topic, but 
Another way that could have enhanced it even further and really drawn a connection might have been to take a step out of the story. So as you're in the middle of telling the story, perhaps ask us a question then. Have you ever been in a situation where you had a plan and things changed? Have you ever had your life on cruise? Everything was going great and it came to a screeching halt. Imagine if you had a life plan and when something changed, what to plan B? Let's see, D-E. <laughs> for really being able to connect with the audience further would be using more vivid descriptions or vocal variety. So as you're talking about your experiences in life and the challenges you went through, how did that make you feel? So my plan, it, it just wasn't working anymore. Were you frustrated? Were you angry? When you got back on track, how'd you feel? You look more confident, you stand a little taller, you feel good about having been able to overcome those challenges. So overall, I thought it was a really great speech with an incredible message that everyone was really able to benefit from hearing. I know that my life is so busy that I need to take a time to step out, and maybe slow down for a minute and think about what I'm doing. So thank you for that kind reminder. You've definitely got me thinking about what is my life plan. Toastmaster, we have all the ballots. Thank you. The winner of tonight's contest has something special.
special in store for them. I don't want to spill the beans, but I want to call up one of our distinguished Toastmasters who will let you know what's in store for the winner of tonight's contest and each and every one of you. Please join me in welcoming District 30 Governor Joan Moore.
Congratulations, Don Williams, and congratulations, Terry Haywood. We will be seeing you at the fall conference. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. <laughs> we will now have a five-minute break and start our humorous speech contest. <laughs>